So we've learned a whole bunch of different definitions as well as a few different probability rules. So it's time for us to put it all together with mixed practice. And I apologize in advance in fall 2020, I realized that I wanted to add in this review question from 5.1, which is not there originally in the course pack. So just kind of tuck it in there where you can in the empty space. And in later semesters, it will be part of this example. So hospital records indicated that the kidney replacement patient stayed in the hospital for the number of days shown in the distribution over the past five years. And I did this get this from a real statistics for nursing data book if that's any help at all. So here we have the days stayed, and here's the frequency, the relative frequency at that. So I add on a little note that it's the relative frequency. Now the first question I wanted to ask is from section 5.1, which is why is this a valid probability model? Ah, there are two components that make it a valid probability model. One, we need to check that the sum of the probabilities is one. So I'm going to grab a calculator, or you could grab Desmos, either one, Desmos is a calculator, it's just an online calculator. And then I want to check that the probabilities here make one, or they should be very close to one. Oh, they do make one. So the sum of these probabilities, the sum of these relative frequencies is one, which is great for us because then we note all the probabilities are between zero and one. So all probabilities are between zero and one and letter B the sum of the probabilities is equal to one those are the two rules we first learned in section 5 1 for probabilities all probabilities need to be between zero and one and the sum of the probabilities for your sample space needs to be one and we have that so that's what makes it a valid probability model we'll see that again in chapter 6 as well and if you're worried about this being relative frequency rather than probability, remember they're one and the same for empirical probabilities, which would be worth noting. These are empirical probabilities, in case that was a question that was asked, because they're from data, or in this case, a statistics textbook for nursing. <laughs> All right, now what is the probability a patient stays four days? Well, that's easy enough. The probability of four is 0.252, easy enough. Now, what is the probability a patient stays three or four days? Well, you can't stay three and four, right? It's either three days or it's four days. They're disjoint, so I'll make a note. There's no overlap. All right, therefore, the probability of three or four is the probability of three plus the probability of four. I'm using a, the addition rule for disjoint events. I'm using rule number one. So I would just add them up. There's no overlap. So the probability of three is 0.118. The probability of four is 0.252 grab a calculator and I get 0 0.37 all right what's the probability that a patient stays fewer than six days fewer than six let's think about that fewer than six would be three four or five so when they want the probability of fewer than six, six does not count. So that'd be the probability of three plus the probability of four plus the probability of five, right? We would just add them up because they're all disjoint. So it's 0.118 plus 0 0.252 plus 0 0.441, right? They're all disjoint. All right, so grab a calculator, 0 0.118 plus 0 0.252 plus 0 0.441. We could have just taken 0 0.37 and added 0 0.441, but this is fine. And we get 0 0.811. All 
All right, what about the probability of at least six? And that's going to be important to us for noting what at least means. At least means that much or more, right? So six or more, so six or seven. So this would be a probability of six or seven, which is the probability of six plus the probability of seven, again, because they're disjoint. So that'd be 0.150 plus 0 0.039. No calculator required. That's 0 0.189. So let's make a note. At least means that much um, greater than. Oops, I spelled greater than wrong. Oh my goodness. Greater than. <laughs> there we go. I forgot my A. Greater than or equal to. Very important definition. I'm going to give that a little highlight because we're going to use that one again. Greater than or equal to. All right, what is the probability that a patient stays an even number of days or less than five days? Ah, so finally we're getting to something really good. An even number of days would be four and six, right? Those are even. Less than five would be four or three. And if you'll notice, these are not disjoint. Ah, we're gonna have something, something snazzy here. So I want the probability of even, I'm gonna write this out, probability of even or less than five. Those are our two events. It's gonna be the probability of even plus the probability of less than five, but minus the probability of both. Hmm. Okay, even would be four and six together. So I'm just gonna add those up. Four and six together makes 0.252 plus 0.150, right? Because four is 0.252 plus 0.150, makes 0 0.402. Okay, so even is 0 0.402. I added the probabilities of four and six. Less than five, let me grab, less than five would be three and four. So it'd be 0.118 plus 0.252. So that's 0.37. Oh, that's right, we already found that one. Okay, so add to it 0.37. But now we have to take away the overlap because it's not fair. We've counted four twice. So that 0.252 was part of this 0.402 and it was part of the 37. So we have to take away that overlap. So you have to take away the probability of four, which is 0.252. Right like that. All right, so I'm gonna grab my lovely, lovely calculator and make it do the work for me. So I'm gonna take 0 0.402 plus 0 0.37 minus 0 0.252, and I get 0 0.52. So that's the result. This one was not disjoint. I don't wanna do it in that color because I just used the red of above. So I'm gonna write here and circle this four right here. They're not disjoint. All right, last but not least, letter G. What is the probability a patient did not stay six days? Okay, well there's a special word in there, not. That not is key, because that means that we're going to be using complement. So if I want the probability of not staying six days, that's the same thing as the probability of six complement, which according to the complement rule is one minus the probability of six, which would be one minus, and the probability of six was 0.150, Oh, so that would be 0 0.850. If you grab a calculator, you can check me. Okay.
Let's go back through really quickly and see which rules we used where, because that could be helpful for future reference. So we have our three probability rules right here. The addition rule for disjoint events, the general addition rule, and the complement rule. Those are the three that we're using so far. Step This part right here is actually the definition rules, so um, all probabilities must be um, within these two. So the sum of the probabilities must be one, and all probabilities must be between zero and one. So that's more definition stuff. And this particular one right here is just a simple reading a table definition. So this part right here, we used rule number one. We used the addition rule for disjoint events, because right? we just added. Same thing here, actually. This is also rule number one, because we just added right here. It just happened to be the more, there was more of them. So the way that the addition rule is written, it only has two. But if you have more than one or more than two events and they're all disjoint, you can just keep adding and adding and adding. No problem. And that actually happens here also. This is rule number one. So all three of these were disjoint, disjoint, and disjoint. Right, because six and seven are disjoint, three, four, and five are disjoint, three and four are disjoint. So I could say right here, six, seven are disjoint. That's why I'm using rule number one for all of these. But when I got down to rule number F, ah, this is not disjoint. And that's why I had to use rule number two, the general addition rule where you subtract away the overlap right here. And then this bottom one right here is rule number three. It's the complement rule. Because of the negative voice, by saying not staying six days, it's a cue that you need to use the complement rule, which is rule number three.